We're going to do the usual annual thing of looking at new hardware. Some of this I'm very familiar with. Um, some of it arrived in the last couple of weeks and I have literally not touched yet. This is my hardware survey for OSCON, um, which I usually prepare next month. So the hardware arrives this month and so we're starting to have the tradition to do the unboxing here, sort of. So let, uh, let me start with, um, uh, with one of the things that I am familiar with. This one came out, um, this one came out in, in last fall. And it is, um, it is a stick format computer. Uh, you may remember the MK802 um, that we had last year, which was a lower power device. This one actually is uh, the first quad core that I got my hands on. And it's, uh, it's a stick format device, just like the old one, but um, it's a bigger stick, considerably. The format is the usual, so on one end, you have HDMI going to your monitor. On the other end, you have USB going to your keyboard and, and providing power. And in the middle, you have the computer. Just like the, um, the fabled um, um, cotton candy computer that we never, get our, uh, we never got our hands on. So this one um, is made, it is distributed by Miniand, uh, which distributes a bunch of these devices, um, even for, even those designed by third parties, it turns out. For instance, the QB board that I got here came from Miniand. There used to be another distributor before, distributor before. I think that they are starting to be sort of a place to have um, your um, developer kit hardware um, sold from. So it's good to know if that's the case. This uh, is sold as an Android mini PC, just like the, uh, the MK802 <coughs> was last year. And the price is very similar. The MK802 was $94. This one is $99. The uh, MK used to be an all-winner um, arm. This actually has a Freescale IMX6. Uh, and it is a Cortex A9 quad core, which is quite nice. 1.2 gigahertz. Uh, it has a four-core GPU. Uh, not familiar with the design. It's listed as Vivante GC2000. It has one gigabyte of RAM, so it's not on the high end of what you can get on RAM right now, but it's pretty reasonable. It has wireless built-in. It has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB all the way to N, and USB to uh, ports, obviously. Let's see if we can see it here. Uh, there is a USB-A and a micro USB. Can we just make out there. Um, the micro USB is there for power. The, the keyboard goes in the other one. Uh, it has inside a slot for a micro SD. Actually, no, I stand corrected. There is an opening for it. There is a slot for a micro SD card uh, up to 32 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. And in instead of flash, it boots from an internal second micro SD. So if you open up the case, you can actually replace that as well. Um, Ubuntu images were announced when I got this device. I haven't looked more recently to see if that was updated. Probably should. And uh, what else is there? So it's wireless only on the networking? It's Bluetooth as well. But no RJ45 wired. Oh, no, no, no. No wired network. Um, How good is the Wi-Fi? Some of the ones I've read, it's a little bit iffy. I'm wondering because the case is metal. 
So I'm a little bit concerned about that. So especially, I, I, I mean, some of the reviews I saw, people were sticking this directly on their TVs. And I guess it's in the corner of the room, probably not the best uh, uh, you know, reception. And there's a bunch of other wires along. So and there, were, there were people had issues um, either connecting or reliably holding on to the Wi-Fi. I, I wouldn't be surprised. The other stick format devices I've seen so far had a plastic stick. This one, because it actually needs to make full use of its inside space, is metal. So, unless they were very clever with antenna design, which I don't think they were, um, that seems like a valid concern. I didn't notice anything because I obviously was using it on my desk and mm -hmm. the uh, access point is right there, so it was too easy. Um, there was another thing that I was thinking about. Um, oh, yeah, as I said, this one is $99. And it's, uh, I think it's a pretty good deal for, for the power it has. It's a little bit short in, uh, in memory, but for quad cores, not bad. Um, there is a bunch of stuff in the box, as uh, Minion tends to do which is power supply, just in case you cannot find the USB. <laughs> Do you happen to know if the other chipsets on there are? Like Bluetooth CSR chipset maybe? I don't. Yeah. I, uh, I did uh, disassemble this in January, but it was, at, uh, it was not on my photo bench, so I wasn't able to take pictures. Right. I've read good things about the Vivanti GPU, but I don't know anything about it. Oh, it's mostly right. trade literature. They compare themselves to other better GPUs. And so the specs it was, are very hard to come by. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. <coughs> uh, that question that I had sent you about um, oh, yeah, about I remember the it money, uh, oh, it yes. turns out that the multiplier is 17. Now, how that works, I have no idea. <laughs> but their, their number is 72. So. 16 made some sense. There is another mysterious unit besides a shader that they are counting. And I have no idea what it is. Okay. Um, okay, so, um, Kurt, I'll tell you what the chips are when I do the, the photo shoot for Oscar. Oh, good. You don't have LSHW working there, right? <laughs> LSHW on arm. <clears throat> the, the, the microscope. Okay. Actually, I actually thought I would bring that, but then I thought that we had too much hardware to go playing with the microscope as well. More hardware than you require. As, exactly. <laughs> okay, so that's one. And it's basically an upgrade to, to what we had seen before. But it's quad core, so that's a nice step. Is it a standard 500 milliamp power, or does it actually draw more than Ah, that's a good question. I don't think there is anything serious in here, but I don't know if it can go up to 500. This is a two, uh, this is a two amp supply, so it's oversized. I'll have to measure it have to measure it to uh, give you an answer. So if it's quad core, like, can you, uh, like, run GIMP on it? You can run GIMP reasonably on, uh, on a Raspberry Pi already, so, sure. By reasonably, I mean it actually get performance. Well, I guess that depends on what kind of transform you're going to do exactly. Now, if it's going to run GIMP or some other photo processing application at quad core speeds better than a uh, old cheap laptop that doesn't have quad core, it uh, might be interesting. Um. 
and who would be the user? Maybe a white man. I don't know. I think I think the, 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 the bigger problem would be, especially if you want to edit raw images, is the amount of memory it's got. Yeah. So I, I don't yeah. think it's the, the, the core that matters if you only remember. Well, you need both. You need both, but I think in this case, the limiting factor might be the memory. I was also worried about the clock speed of the these cores are sufficiently crippled that it doesn't like it. It's a core that's A9, so you know what you're getting. And 1.2 gigahertz is that? What frequency? 1.2, yes. It's a free scale. It's not. Uh, it's not an armada or some strange thing. So it is a cortex A9. No surprise. Um, okay. So next one. This is the first in a large collection of things. Um, actually, no. Let me take that back. This is powered by Viya. So it's the only one in that thing. So besides some marketing there, and the power supply. Let's see what this is rated at. This is 1.67, but interestingly enough, it's running at 9 volts. So this one won't work. 9 volts, that's good for portable. Won't work off of USB. Now. But it will work off of battery. Oh, uh, one thing about the stick PC, as I said, it's uh, meant as an Android platform, so Android is available for it, and there are Ubuntu images, but um, I don't know about anything else. You should expect uh, that Fedora and Debian should be generally available, if you're willing to at least manipulate an existing image. Okay, so this one is the VIA APC. Um, standing for Android PC. And this is uh, an 800 megahertz VIA processor. It's uh, 512 megabytes of DDR, DDR3, two gigabytes of NAND flash, an HDMI port somewhere here, VGA, audio output and microphone, USB, wired network, SD card up here, and uh, is it four USB or it's USB and two DC. It's four. It's four USB ports. And uh, ten one hundred Ethernet, micro SD, as I said. So this is the largest board that there are. Well, actually no. There are bigger boards now with the stuff that arrived last week. Have you seen any low cost ARM boards of Gigabit Ethernet? Mm -hmm. No. But uh, even if they had, the problem would be how much of Gigabit really that is because um, you're going to eat a lot of the processor. Yeah, the CPU might become limiting unless the CPU is sufficiently powerful. Remember when we were looking at the um, at the Western Digital Hard Drive, there was something funny in there in terms of marketing that um, this was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. they had a, a gig e right. It had a gigabit but Ethernet was, uh, chip that was put in there because the uh, the SOC had 10100 Ethernet, so they put another chip just to add gigabit Ethernet to the branding. But the CPU was 200 megahertz ARM and not an application processor, an embedded processor. So it was really the butt of jokes how far you could go with that at uh, gigabit speed. Was it, it was faster <coughs> than 100, but yeah. barely more than that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The one board uh, has gigabit Ethernet, and that's equipped with the FreeScale quad core 1.7 gigahertz processor. So that could, that could Which board? The one board. The one board? Uh, W-A-N-D-B-O-A-R-D. Wound. Yeah. They used some special form factor. You know, like processor? It's the FreeScale. Oh, right, right. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right, the 
that's interesting. So um, this one not only is a PC in name, but actually has um, a faceplate like a PC would. And uh, Vaya calls this form factor micro I uh, Neo IDX. <laughs> what, whatever that means. So <laughs> it's I'm making up a form factor and I'm giving it the name. Here's my standard. But um, it's nice that it has a faceplate, so if you want to build a case, you have the um, you have the way to do it. I think I think this one has two gigabytes of NAND, but the newer models have four. Yeah, this one has two. Current ones have four. Uh, to work. How much RAM is it? Sorry, I RAM. Uh, RAM is five twelve. Um, around Christmas, they had a promotion where you could buy two for a hundred dollars, making the effective price of one forty nine dollars. I don't know where they are right now. Maybe there's been some change. This was when the board still had um, still had two gigs of NAND. That's about it. Um, there is a DC power jack there if you don't want to use the external one. Nothing much else to say. Um, this one boots Android from the Flash, and I haven't done anything with it, but. You can obviously boot it from the from the SD card instead. I think that's that. Let's see if there are some news online. Let me see the Oh, that's right. Okay, so now they're making one that's in a case made of cardboard that opens like a book. Um, so the, the edge is made of metal and uh, the rest of the box is made of, uh, of cardboard. And uh, this one is now named the APC 8750. The new one is called the Rock. Let's see if there are changes in the specs. There are Android 4 on the newer ones, Android 2.3 on this one. Uh, the newer model has an ARM Cortex A9, also made by Vaya and still at 800 megahertz. Same RAM, same flash, apparently same everything. They just uh, they just changed the processor with, with the Cortex and updated the operating system, it looks like. Oh, also noteworthy, this has a JTAG somewhere. And there is a power reset button here. So you don't have to pull the plug all the time. Uh, yeah, um, Neo ITX is claimed as a standard. Yeah, the new case is recycled pressed cardboard with high-grade aluminum. <laughs> or aluminum. I can never remember which one is the British and which one is the other. But supposedly you should be able to screw this onto uh, a case that's mini-ITX or micro-ITX. At least I, I believe that's the general idea.
<laughs> and this would fit in one of their products. Yeah. And some people have done for the purposes of um, pen testing. Mm. We'll buy a single board computer embedded in a power strip for uh, purposes of uh, pen testing your client. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, there is a lot of real estate. You're not supposed to use it for pen testing non clients. Yeah. Oh, this is the pony? I know the pony. There might be another one. Yeah. Hmm. The one I'm thinking of comes loaded with a whole bunch of uh, forensic apps. Right. right. <laughs> uh, the pony is built with uh, with a Shiva plug. So uh, it has. Uh, you just walk in. It, ha it has an Ethernet cord, Wi-Fi, and a cellular modem. Oh, it's not your expect is to log in over the um, um, cellular internet uh, and use the Wi-Fi and the wire to attack the target. Federico, can I steal your chair? Um, sure. There's a couple of stealable ones up here. A couple of what? There's oh, yeah, there are a couple there. Yeah, they're they're not rolling rolling this in behind the camera. I'm not going to get in front of the camera. My manager says I don't get enough money. But, oh, this one doesn't roll. I'm sorry. What were we saying? The, the, the removable ones here behind the camera. There are? Yeah. yeah right. There's yeah. one yeah. the camera. Hockey. Thank you, thank you, Blake. Nobody else tries to help me. <laughs> one that moves around. I don't know if it's on wheels, but it moves around. Well, this one's not on wheels. It'll slide. <laughs> <laughs> Just kick it. If you want one with wheels but no cushion, try that one. That one doesn't have wheels either. Well, that's cheating. Those ugly ones usually have wheels. Oh, I have to move to another room. Well, I, you know, I could go in there. Just other, shove you know. it. Huh? What? We're telling you where to go, and now we're telling you to shove it. Just shove it. <laughs> and I'll tell you, you shove it. I'm going to go find a better chair. You can't help some people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. editing this, I have to remember to chop out that part. <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend editing your videos, yes. <laughs> what do you mean? It's the highlight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you find a better way to edit them. Right now, I, I load into my uh, uh, little Mac Mini. So I hook up the camcorder, and it takes almost 24 hours just to load the video in. And then once I finish it, I need another 24 hours to uh, so you, instead of the Mac Toast, you need the new Mac Wastebasket. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have the budget for that. <laughs> Mac Wastebasket. Yeah, the, the, the one with the nuclear cooling tower built in. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Somebody posted a picture of an actual wastebasket that looks just like it. I'm not surprised. It must have been hard to go down to Staples to find it. You worry about that for me. I wasn't talking about you. Okay, so. You got your own wheels. What do you need wheels on a chair for if you got your own wheels? <laughs> All right. Um, which one should we go with next? All right, QB, it is. So, this one uh, is being designed by a guy called QB. That's the origin of the name, just in case you wonder. It's been around for about half a year. Uh, originally, the supply was pretty damn awful. Now, as I said, Minion is shipping these too, and suddenly it's easy to get. This one, just like the APC, is $49. So, uh, we're getting into... Um, um, Raspberry Pi throwaway computing territory. However, uh, this one is is an all-winner chip. 
one gigahertz. It's a cortex, but it's an A8 apparently. So don't get too excited. It has a GPU 400. Uh, it's a Mali 400. I don't know what speed it's clocked at. Four gigs of NAND, and it boots from NAND. <coughs> one gig of DDR3, which seems to be the standard for all these new boards. Um, but it's, uh, according to my notes, it's clocked at 480 megahertz, so I have no idea what that means in the context of DDR3. And uh, same story as the other ones coming from Minion, so there is a box with a ton of cables in this case, because I got the expensive version, I suppose. So let's see what's in there. Um, this is a cable breakout. This is uh, a Wi-Fi dongle. Cable uh, to go from USB to um, the plug format that it uses for power. A USB breakout, I suppose, to access the JTAG. And uh, this is SATA, which is part of the reason why the board is actually interesting. This is not all that 449. This is the more expensive version that has all the cables. Um, so. It's only got one meg of RAM, but it's got one SATA. Gig. Oh, yeah, one it's got SATA, and that's what makes it interesting. So, um, I don't see it on Metro. If he was here, he would ask immediately if the SATA can be cable split. This time I'm ready, it cannot be. Uh, it generally can cannot ever be, but Tom is obsessed with that. Um, the interesting thing, however, is that the other question he would ask is, where is the power coming from? And in this case, the board actually has a connector for power. So you can power the board and then power a drive that's not that's not a monster in power draw, so a, a laptop hard drive, ideally, through that cable. Uh, it has um, a bunch of things. So SD card, um, HDMI, and it can do <coughs> it can do 1080p. So it's powerful enough for that. There is a button here. <coughs> the power jack. There is an IR uh, receiver. The SATA, the power for the SATA. And on two sides of the board, line-in and microphone. I'm sorry. Uh, line in and speaker for the audio, <coughs> a USB, uh, network is 10100 Ethernet, Wi Fi, as I said, comes as an option here from the USB ports. You stick the dongle in one of those. Um, and these two USB ports are host. Uh, this one is OTG, if that matters to you and the micro SD slot, as usual, 32 gigabytes there. Um, there is a 96-pin expansion interface that's brought out here, which gives you direct access to the SOC. So if you know what to do with that, that may be very interesting. The SOC is the old winner, so it's not a very exciting SOC, but you have uh, access to pretty much anything on it. Um, how to see SPI, Aurelian. Uh, there are Android, Ubuntu, and Debian images available for this one. Uh, we've seen all the cables. I think that's the totality of accessories available. It's basically a cheaper Beagle Bone with SATA. And now that the Beagle Bone black is out, it's just a Beagle Bone with SATA. So, um, the reason why I got into this device was that some of you know that I have a side project uh, about erasing the hard drives securely, and the SATA port was interesting for that, uh, for that purpose. It boots Android right off the bat, so you just plug it in and it comes up off the uh, HDMI port. It's slightly annoying on the software side if you don't want to run Android, which for obvious reasons I don't. Um, because the, 
mm, the images that you find for all winner are hidden in places that I either I don't know too well or they are not too convenient or when I was trying to download the Ubuntu image were extremely slow in terms of connectivity, surprisingly. So um, there are some glitches getting images, but that has improved. And there is a project. Let me see what the name of it is. Uh, there is a project called Berry Boot um, that uh, basically will take care of installing images on a lot of these devices when you don't want Android. So you create a very good SD card, you put it in there, it comes up with the menu saying, well, what do you want? And it's uh, and you can choose Debian, uh, Ubuntu, Puppy, uh, any strange image you want that's available for your device, and it will take care of downloading it and flashing it uh, to, the, uh, to the SD card for you. So that's convenient. I like... Um, I like tools that even when they're meant for developers, don't make you um, curse too much while you're setting them up. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's nice to be able to start playing with the thing rather than trying to figure out how are you supposed to boot it. So that's it. Uh, as I said, this one is 49, so not bad. Um, Does that come with the cable for the connection? The cable for the um, extension? I don't know, but we can check. There's a base that goes with that for $29. Is that the Includes SATA cable and USB power cable, which you'll need because it has. Oh, wait, US? Yeah, you will need USB power cable because it has a special power connector. So it goes from its own connector to USB. So yeah, the, the 49, which is right now out of stock, seems uh, seems reasonable. And now they added uh, a case, which wasn't available before for just eight bucks. Mm. So they're not trying to rip you off on the case. That's completely unusual. Um, there is a breadboard, baseboard, also interesting. They added a few accessories. So I'll have to go and take a look and update. Okay. Um, it's the same price point as the APC, but it has twice the RAM. So, unless you have a personal preference for a VIA chip, this probably is a better choice. And obviously, SATA makes it um, interesting on its own. By the way, for those of you that were not at Red Hat Summit last week, uh, John Masters demonstrated uh, Fedora on ARM 8 hardware, which he has as pre-release alpha. Zero, zero, 001, but he has actual silicon. Um, so shows six, 64 megabits. From Applied Micro? Yes. And um, and uh, he's pretty far along in the, in the bring up, so he was able to give a pretty nice demo. He had two cores on an SOC, two different machines running on, on the two cores, so he would go in and do both things twice, like you name, you name, uh, Apache, Apache. And then uh, he had Gluster running over the two, creating a distributed file system. So it was a nice demo. I don't know about performance there, obviously too early to tell, but um, we're, most of the devices we're looking at here that are ARM are Cortex A9. They are the, the occasional older chip, but the default choice seems to be a Cortex A9. But Cortex A15 on the 32-bit front has been appearing. So uh, an A15 will actually beat the pants of, off of an A9 even at the same clock speed, just because of the pipeline. Uh, the expectation is that it will be 40% off of an A9 just for that. 
and then you have to consider better memory access and whatnot. But so A15 is an interesting thing. This is uh, probably outside of the hobbyist range. This is an Arndale board. This one does not come from my collection because it's a $260 device. It comes from Canonical's labs that uh, graciously loaned me one of a stack we have. Um, the board is a development board, so it's bigger than it needs to be by a lot. Um, I guess they didn't make any effort at miniaturization here. The interesting part is the Exynos uh, chip there at the middle. Uh, it's an Exynos 5 Dual by trademark. I believe the part number is 5520. I can never get it right. Yes, it is a 5520. And uh, it, is a, it is a dual core 1.6 or 1.7. It has a Mali a T600 uh, GPU. So the chip is quite interesting. Um, and it has pretty much the same power draw as most uh, ARM chips out there. This entire board goes over 10 watts, but you don't need everything that's on this board if you are interested in low power. So let me pull up the specs. Uh, that's right, Exynos 5 Dual 5250. This is a 13 nanometer part. ARM V7, 1.7 gigahertz dual core, Cortex A15. ARM Mali T604. Um, with four cores at 533 GHz is the is the uh, the GPU that's on the SOC. Um, the memory is, is a dual channel DDR3 uh, at 800 MHz and um, pretty much this is the only way you can get it right now unless you buy a Chromebook or certain uh, certain uh, mobile phones, let's see, Google Nexus 10, seems to be one. So, uh, interesting from the point of view of the chip, um, the board is really not a hobbyist board, it's a little bit more expensive than what I would be willing to pay, and it's also one of the biggest boards we have here because there was no effort at miniaturization. Pretty much anything imaginable is being brought out. So there is an SD card. Uh, this is uh, labeled SATA, but it's eSATA. Um, power switch, power plug, and uh, I believe this is the biggest power plug I've seen so far for one of these devices, despite the drum. This one is, um, this um, supplies four amps. Five volts, um, Ethernet, usual, two USBs, micro USB, uh, another a USB, but it's labeled as USB three, JTAG, a serial port, which I presume is for debugging, and then there are a bunch of modules. Um, these are swappable, so that you can have different components that you would test on a cell phone. I actually don't even know what these two are. One looks like a radio, and the other one um, has um, an audio component, but I don't know what it is. I think the other one might be a camera. Could be. It has two connectors. Mm. Well, the top one's an audio board. Okay, so audio and, uh, and some kind of radio. And then there is HDMI in some uh, in some plug that I hadn't seen yet, which is a tinier HDMI, but it's not micro. Maybe that's the fable mini HDMI. Uh, this one has been fairly hard to get. It uh, keeps being sold out. Well, there's good news on that. They just came out with another really large run, the Arndale Board B, okay. which I'm pretty sure is identical to the A. I was looking at on the site, I can't tell the difference, Yeah, but they haven't explained anything. No, I, I think it's 
to make people make it expect some new colors, but that's it, probably the same. Okay, well, that's good to know. So you've had some experience running these, can you tell us? So the, the big, uh, for some researchers, the holy grail is to have OpenCL drivers on your embedded board. Mm -hmm. And this is the only one that shows promise there because the, if you go to mollydeveloper.com or whatever, you can download the Molly OpenCL SDK. And this is the only board yeah. in the wild that it works on. But it doesn't work on Linux. It, you know, it's an Android install that you have to do, you got to get the OpenCL SDK.co. It's, it's, it's a fairly elaborate process to get OpenCL working on that board with Android. With Android? With Android, and that's the only option right now, but, but so many people want this. I mean, there's a community set up for this exact problem, OpenCL on the Exynos 5. So, it's a matter of time. <laughs> okay, sounds like fun. So the dri the OpenCL driver is the problem. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the Android one is open source. Um, yes. It uh, well, you, you you download everything you can from the community, from the uh, Arndale board community. Mm -hmm. All the drivers and everything. There's, there's a bunch of options. Most don't work, but the Android how to actually does work. <laughs> okay. Great. You can co compile the driver for the uh, no. same version Linux kernel like stop. That's very frustrating. We even dragged the you know the, the static uh, libraries over and, mm -hmm. or the, the dynamic libraries and mm -hmm. and uh, no and I don't know enough about the innards to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, but there's one you know if you go to the OpenCL blog that the guy uh, um, Matthew Scarpino writes. He's got the last two months have been articles about this exact problem, so some, somebody's going to figure it out. All right, so next one. This is also um, a slower processor, like the ones we were discussing before, but it's at the complete opposite end of the spectrum from what we saw in terms of size. This is the smallest thing I have. Too small a print. This is that George Carroll used to talk about where you put all the human knowledge in that and you lose it. So, um, actually, the, the scale of this, remember when we were discussing um, Apple making their laptops thinner and not having um, side room to put an Ethernet jack? Because if you look at this 2010 era device, the Ethernet jack is already the full depth of the laptop. So the current ones, the laptop is thicker than an Ethernet jack, so they cannot have one. Yeah, this looks like a complete PC in a thumb drive. We have exactly the same problem here. Where is the power? The power would be bigger than this thing. So um, you end up having daughter boards for the power. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is actually a, devel a, a development rig so that you get some access, console access and power through the USB. And you basically tag this on with the connector. So this this board is over Oviro, I guess, Earthstorm. It's a gumsticks board. It's not as expensive as gumsticks boards used to be. This one is around $110, 109 when I got this one. Uh, but you need additional tools, like in this case you need the Janus board to have console access and so on. Um, you can purchase a beautiful $30 power supply that then won't plug in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in this case, you know, I'm powering it through USB. But uh, when you're buying uh, a gumstick uh, board, you always have to figure out where is the console going to come from? Where is the power going to come from? Because you'll need multiple pieces of hardware. So if you don't want to pay shipping twice, 
which I've done, I believe, more than once, um, you, you want to figure out all of those questions up front. Those brand new ones? Um, this is a Gumsticks Overo Earth Storm. So Gumsticks has been around for a long time. The idea was that you would be able to have a computer in the size of a pack of gum, and that's why they had these cases made. Now the computer is too too small for the case, but I have easily dozens of an old generation board that somebody gave me, and um, it would be nice to do a project where we have distributed sensors. But again, how to, do you get the power to these boards? I have one board to uh, to bring the power to one. The fact that I have a dozen um, is not easy to solve. Probably have to design a custom board or something. Um, probably not worth it. It's probably what they expect you to use these for is use this as a daughter board for some other project. I think um, when I speak to their salespeople asking which part should they use for what, uh, the answer, well, let's design a custom board together comes up a whole lot. So mm -hmm. evidently they do that, um, they do that with their customers fairly often. Uh, which may make sense. I mean, they have daughter boards for things like uh, a webcam. Um, so you could, if you can have the power come into that, that would make sense and you don't need a stack of three boards. Connectors are 70 pin custom connectors. Um, the older ones used to be called high rows. And these ones, I have no idea what they're called. Uh, there is a 27 pin camera connector. And uh, which is there, and there is um, a micro SD card slot. This board is 15 grams, including the case, and it's rated for high temperature use, up to 85 centigrades. So you can put it in places where it's going to get distressed, not by being in boiling water, but because the environment is going to get hot. So it's, it's nice for field applications. Uh, this is the lightest and smallest I have. Um, you can attach daughter cards using this uh, interface system that we're using for the, for the serial port for the console. Um, it has 512 megs of RAM, 512 megs of NAND both of them on board, and then you have the SD card. The processor is a 1 gigahertz TI Citara. Um, it's an ARM Cortex, but it's an A8. The part is AM3703, which doesn't say much to me. I'm not familiar with the Citara one, but um, we'll have to become familiar because the, the, uh, the uh, line that we used to be familiar with, the um, OMAP line, has been discontinued. So, that's it for this one. So the, the Overo terminology used to mean something. Like, Earth had nothing in it. Air had wireless. Uh, fire had GPU, maybe? Do you, do you remember the convention? I never learned it. All right. But that's interesting, actually. Yeah. That there is some method to the madness. Yeah, they had a water and, you know. So it was water cooled? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the HPC gum sticks. <laughs> but that's a good uh, that's a good uh, insight. I'll try to figure out. Sticks a few years ago, my idea was that I wanted to fit it in uh, in an Altoids box with with uh, Ethernet, and I couldn't do it because the expansion board with Ethernet was longer than the Altoids box. But now, you should build your own uh, custom dashboard, <laughs> or my custom Altoids box <laughs> would be cheaper. Um, now it's definitely not an issue. In fact, they are so small that it's uh, the main concern is not breaking things when you are when you are uh, attaching them to one another. Actually, um, 
let me show you since I'm evidently mistakenly brought something I didn't have to, but I can use it to show you. So this is the current size board. This is a medium size uh, older generation gum sticks. This is the the equivalent of the Janus, the, the development board that I was showing to bring out uh, the cereal. This one is what you would have used to power and bring out the cereal in an older uh, board. So that's how the form factor changed. This is how I wound up speaking to their sales team because I needed one of these old boards to, to power these older devices that I inherited. And um, they were no longer available. They had to bring one out from their back room. <laughs> they were no longer on the website, so needed special human intervention to place the order. This one is the latest in a long line of Shiva plugs. Uh, this is um, called Dream Plug 2. And uh, the reason why I like it is that it can run Ubuntu. Ooh. The, uh, 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 the uh, Marvel chips haven't been able to run Ubuntu for a while since we introduced new optimizations and they are very proud of their ARM license, but uh, that made them make our uh, V5 processors longer than anybody else. And we started optimizing for V7, which meant that on the Shiva plugs, I had to use Debian instead of Ubuntu. Uh, on this one, however, it comes with a ton of cables. Um, let's see. USB to micro USB, USB to micro USB, two of them. Power, Ethernet, HDMI. Uh, a cover for the power supply. Why is that? Uh, will become apparent in a second. And the power and cover for the other side. Um, sound extension. I'm sorry, power extension and. Uh, power plugs, depending on what kind of cable connection would you like. So, the most basic, you would have back here this connector, and this would go straight into the wall, and uh, and that's how you'd have the pony plug that I was discussing with uh, with Bill. With the Dream Plug line, uh, Global Scale, that's the manufacturer of these, has started. Um, this habit of making the power supply and uh, and the computer separable. Mm. Um, the joke goes that it's because the last line before the dream line got so hot that the power supply would melt everything. But <laughs> that is actually a fact. But um, <laughs> jokes aside, this actually is convenient because there are plenty of cases where you don't want the computer next to the power. Um, typical case is you want to reach the Ethernet. <laughs> so um, uh, what you have is that there is an extension cable that comes with the kit. Out goes in one side and on the other side and you get to extend the connection. And in the original Dream Plug you didn't get face plates. It would just be this ugly thing where you split it up. But now you get covers. To, um, to keep it nice and clean, even in the split mode. Other than that, the design hasn't changed a whole lot from the Dream Plug. We have two USBs, uh, VGA, network, um, 
micro USB that brings out the console. Have a bunch of LEDs for power, um, wireless, in three different modes. Um, one is Bluetooth, the other one is Wi-Fi, and the third one is is access point mode. So <clears throat> this comes up as an access point by default. You just plug it into the wall, starts broadcasting, and you connect over Wi-Fi. You know the, the default password to be no soup for you and you're in and you start um, and you start developing much better experience than the QB board that I was talking about before um, and then you start from there that is definitely uh, a very nice touch they've started doing that with um, with the Shiva plug that I was mentioning before that has meltdown risk so the Shiva plug was fine, and there was a generation afterwards that was called the Guru plug. That one had power thing issues, and it's not available anymore. So I treasure the units I have because I really like the device. But you have to be careful about the power. Uh, it's very small, just not ventilated enough apparently. And then this is the current format, which is thinner than the Shiva plug and the Guru plug. It's flatter and fits better behind the. In the cabinet, I suppose, when when you're hiding it and pen testing behind somebody's file cabinet, but um, but it's also wider and uh, kind of like having the option of the uh, older device. Here there are a couple of uh, anchor screw um, screw holes, so you put them in the wall and then you would hang it here. And on the other side, uh, Dreamplug started adding lots of media connections, and they're still here. So, eSATA, microphone, audio, full size SD, optical audio, HDMI, I believe this is new, I don't think this was in the dream plug, and the JTAG connector. If you have a JTAG board, um, which would be in here in the package, um, if you have the JTAG board from, uh, from Marvell, that's necessary to um, plug in here, you'll be able to do JTAG debugging of the whole device, which is quite nice if you are doing U-boot development or anything like that. Okay. How um, much was that? Come again? How much was that? Let's see. Uh, this one I got as a sample from the vendor, so I don't know. 180 on Amazon. Yeah. 180. Usually, uh, usually uh, plugs are in the 150 range. You can find the older ones for less, um, because a lot of Shiba plugs were made originally. I see that there is a D3 that has appeared on the site. Mm, but it looks like it's a different thing. It's a Marvel Dove. Okay. I'm getting claims to support gig E2 plug, um, one gigabyte DDR3800. Big issue with the older uh, plugs was memory bandwidth was awful. So uh, my usual benchmark was that you could outpace an 800 megahertz Shiva plug with an AMD geode running at 200 megahertz because the memory bus uh, on the Shiva plug was a joke compared to an Intel chip anyway. So. Uh, and with every generation, it's been improving. So with the Guru plug, they doubled the size. Then on the, with the Dream plug, they doubled the size again. And now the memory bandwidth is acceptable. It's not an issue anymore. Um, uh, there is built-in RAM and I'm sorry, built-in flash, um, eight gigabytes apparently, by default shipping Ubuntu. 
the Ethernet is one gigabit. Let's see. Someone needs to run a benchmark there. Uh, one is SATA, as I was pointing out. One USB to um, one SD card slot, one HDMI 1080p output. So they they have enough muscle to do 1080p. Uh, oh, and I didn't mention, well, I guess I implied it when I was talking about the wireless mode. Um, obviously, there is wireless support in there. So, uh, BGN, Wi Fi, uh, and Bluetooth. This one actually gets to Bluetooth 3. Uh, the, the processor, the SOC, is a Marvell PXA510, clocked at 800 megahertz. With older plugs, I had measured that you could run. Uh, the whole system in around five watts. I imagine that that must have improved, but I haven't. I haven't measured this uh, this one here. Okay. So this one, uh, is Brian here? No. So I uh, invoked Tom and now he's there. So now I'll do the same with Brian. Uh, this is the uh, new BeagleBoard Black, BeagleBone Black. This is the package that it ships in. It's a uh, very flimsy cardboard. <laughs> and it includes a mini, not micro, mini USB and a thank you note. Um, what changed here? So we had an entire meeting about this not very long ago, so I won't <laughs> remark more, but um, there is an SD card, USB, full um, USB-A, the usual bus that, uh, that we're also interested in. Ethernet power. But uh, what is interesting here? What is interesting is that the chip has changed because the OMAP line has been discontinued. Because the OMAP line has been discontinued, uh, this is now a Citara processor. So actually a couple of days ago I got an email, maybe some of you have as well, from uh, DigiKey telling me that uh, Panda boards are now end-of-life hardware because, um, obviously, because uh, TI has terminated OMAP development and so they're starting giving out notices that the hardware will not be available indefinitely. So uh, the Beagle community evidently has made its move to uh, continue existing and they moved on to another TI processor from the Citara line. I also think I said something wrong. I think I called this USB. It looks to me like it's an HDMI. Okay, so that's the other change. Um, that's pretty much the extent of it. We have, um, we have looked at the older Beagle Bone before. Uh, this one is interesting in the sense that uh, it actually can go, uh, in my tests, the older Vivo bone could go to around one watt. If you were not plugging in anything on USB, not plugging in anything on Ethernet, so you were not plugging in anything other than power, you were just existing, and you could uh, run the processor as much as you wanted, but you were not using any anything outside of the SOC it would still be around 1.2 watts, which was quite interesting back then. But that was the OMAP based. I haven't, uh, I haven't benched anything Citara based yet. 
Does that have the same pin out of the same yellow shield? No. <coughs> There are actually a lot more pins. Uh, I have the exact number if you're interested. Mm. Let's see. Sixty-six GPIO lines at three point three volts. Seven AD converted. Converters at 100 uh, kilo samples a second. Uh, this, th these are based on the old SOC. Though. Obviously, the 66 lines are still there, but I don't know if the uh, AD converters are the same or at the same speed. What version of Linux can it run? Um, Pretty so much anything you want. Linux, <laughs> but we can install it into the yes, and then the, This is an A5. Angstrom runs up, runs internal, Ubuntu runs up on uh, micro SD. Um, you can't so, load with the Ubuntu. If these ARM processors the are at least V7 architecture, you can run Ubuntu. Debian, you can run on anything that's at least V5. Um, Armstrong, I don't know. Um, but Armstrong is convenient for some devices. Um, I believe this one ships with Armstrong. Is that right? Yes. So that's the same as the old, uh, as the old, uh, the old one. The first time I booted the BeagleBone, actually, because it was unstrung, it was it booted so fast that it finished booting before the screen uh, got to sync. So I didn't see anything until I pressed enter and I saw a refresh of the console. So there is something to be said for lightweight images. So um, Arch is compiled for ARM v5 TE or higher. Debian, ARM v4, T and up. So Debian is the most compatible of all. I'm sorry, it wasn't ARM v5, it's ARM v4. Uh, Debian also has another version that's ARM v7 and up the hard float build. Uh, Ubuntu is ARM v7 and up and requires thumb two instructions, but ARM v7 should have them. So Ubuntu should be the best performing, Debian should be the most compatible. Fedora used to be kind of in between with uh, an ARM v5 build and an ARM v7 hard float build. Uh, John said uh, last week that they're going to switch to ARM v7 and just uh, go down the performance route. And that they're going to have a separate v6 build for, uh, for the Raspberry Pi, of course. Uh, that's going to be named Pydora. <laughs> So there were sticks about Pydora all over the place. Uh, let's see. As you can see, these are the boards that I've seen less. This one is, the, of the ones that I have not looked at much, is the one that interests me the most. This is an Odroid. Um, it's, um, this is a maker of boards with Samsung chips. So. This is an Oldroid U2. Um, there are a couple of things here on the board in the box that I put in there so they don't count. The, the box comes just with this. So it's a massive heat sink, about two inches side cube. And um, it's connected right there, straight on the SOC. This kind of reminds of the system that we've seen last year that came from Israel, the, um, the two-inch cube computer. That one was based on Marvell chip. This one is Samsung, but it's similar fa form factor, um, except you don't have a case. Um, 
I haven't learned the specs of this one yet. It's uh, an Exynos 4, so let me look up what that means. Odroid U2. So there are multiple Odroid boards. Uh, They're labeled X or U. The X ones are um, in a square format, about uh, 4 by 4, 5 by 5, um, just like many of the boards that we've seen before. Those tend to have a lot of um, of USB ports, like the uh, Odroid X. I believe there is a version that has eight USB ports. Yeah. I would have to look. Let's see. I believe the X has eight USB ports. Yeah. Well, the X definitely has more than four. Yeah, the X2 has four, six that I can see in the picture. Yeah, it's six. It has six. There you go. Um, and it has the, this um, board format that I was describing. The, um, the U is meant to be a compact format, so it, it's kind of like a cell phone in a board. What we have brought out is two USBs and uh, an Ethernet, which is 100. Um, there is a micro SD slot up there, an E. EMC, EMMC connector in case you want to attach some memory of that kind there. Um, there is there are two um, hmm. well, two high speed USBs are obviously those. Um, this is uh, the audio plug, and this really tiny connector is the power connector, which is the smallest I've seen yet. I believe it's 1.8 millimeters. So, um, I'm sorry, which one? I've seen um, some pieces of hardware with this, but not uh, on this board class yet. Um, only on cell phones, like you said. Uh, the QB board has a similar smaller connector, but it's not this small. And because of the power of this processor, you will need at least two amps of this power supply. So it becomes rather annoying to get these. I, my recommendation is to buy them with the device, because it got, doesn't come with it. If it's expensive, uh, don't go to you do it because they don't have these apparently. They have the connector if you want to make one, but um, yeah, the power sure supply costs around forty dollars to put that connector on. Uh, but you can go on eBay <laughs> and get this for five bucks. So either order it with the device or um, go to eBay, but uh, make sure that you have um, the right polarity. Important. That could be also two amps. Um, maybe, maybe. Uh, you. So we we found out an undocumented feature of the Android X. Okay. Was that if you put in two USB jacks, mm -hmm. it'll turn on and the NIC will turn on, and that's about it. You log in and you start getting I/O orders. So I have one of these weird seven-port USB hubs that with a two-amp wire. Right, right. So I know I'm getting them more than a, than a half an amp in that board. And it'll boot right up. So, so I got OTG and another USB uh, male A adapter in there. And it, but then you're subject to brownouts. Subject to brownouts, brown yes. Yeah. So it's all sorts of those weird middle conditions with these 5 volt connectors. Hmm. Um, where have I seen this recently? Oh, I've seen it on an Arduino project, but not on a computer. I guess I'm too careful with my power supplies and computers. In an Arduino project, I did see this. I have something that prints tweets about my product. So, any time somebody says something about my product on Twitter, it pops out this printer. And I built it off an Arduino. Uh, the power to the printer goes from the Arduino. And actually, this is an Adafruit project. It's an uh, Internet of Things printer because the printer sur sources power from the Arduino. When the printer powers up, the Arduino is subject to brown brownouts. So the printer can crash the board because of 
the southern strip. But um, I haven't seen it recently. But, uh, I haven't seen it recently with uh, with computers. Not in the last ten years, anyway. Um, let's see. Uh, Android four and Ubuntu twelve ten is available for this, and obviously any Ubuntu image um, that you care to build. Apparently, uh, there is support for audio codecs. I'm not sure what that exactly boils down to, but it's advertised. The bit that's interesting is the chip, just like in the case of the Arndale. So this is a quad-core, ARM Cortex-A9. Um, the Arndale is, uh, is a 5520, so it's, it's um, Cortex-A15 uh, M profile. This is, uh, is Cortex-A9 MP core, which I believe is the same thing. Um, the board is priced at $89. Let's look at what the SOC, um, what the SOC has. This is the 4412. 4412 Prime. It's the overclocked one. So um, it's the same thing as the 4412, except it's overclocked. So. Um, Trade name is Exynos 4 Quad. Part name is 4412. It's a slightly bigger process than the other one. It's a 32 nanometer process, but same RV7. Uh, maximum clock is 1.7 gigahertz. Uh, the GPU is an ARM Mali 400. Uh, also quad core at 440 megahertz. So this one performs at about a quarter the power of the of the Mali that's in the 5520. Um, dual uh, memory access is at 400 megahertz, <coughs> so half, but it's also 32 bit compared to the Arndale. Uh, this has been shipped in a bunch of devices at 1.6 gigahertz in the Galaxy Note 2, Galaxy Note 8, and a bunch of other things, mostly Samsung hardware. At 1.6, at 1.4 gigahertz, the older version, non-prime, it's in a lot of devices. <laughs> it works. Now we need to call the president. <laughs> um, so, this is currently available. This is the famous board that uh, the vendor likes to give us their credit card number if you go to their site. Um, every time there is a size comparison, they put uh, a picture of their credit card next to the board. Uh, in this case, it's actually quite nice because the board is two-thirds of the size of the width of a credit card and it's the same as the height. So, it's a very nice comparison. There is an extra connector here, this white connector, that I don't know what it is. And it's not, it's not listed in the spec. What is that? Um, there is a one megabyte of level two cache. Uh, this is on the SOC, so it's shared between the four cores and the GPU. Two gigs of RAM just like on the Arndale, uh, 800 megahertz data rate. Okay, so that was incorrect in the list that I was reading before. Also rated at 1080p if you're driving video through it. There's a micro HDMI, which is right there. Standard headphone jack. Amps power, we discussed that extensively. <coughs> it comes with U Boot 2010 12 on the image, kernel 3.0, Android 4.0, and obviously you can run Ubuntu or all the other distributions that we're listing will run here. But I still
still don't know what that connector is. Oh, it's a serial. It's labeled UART. The white connector? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a debug interface. <coughs> they sell a special USB to... It's basically a UART. You need another converter. Yet another converter. And it's got that same NIC on it that, that Panamort has, the SLSC combination USB Ethernet stack. Uh, it's AX3370. It's, it's actually easy to compile in the kernel, but... but you You're not any, impressed. Don't get anywhere near fast Ethernet speeds out of it. You do get better than fast Ethernet if you hook a USB dongle up to it, though. So figure that one out. Going through USB to NIC, and you're getting better than fast Ethernet out of a gigabit. One thing that's interesting is that you can get uh, an EM EMMC card for it, so that you get faster storage than than SD. Here they say 200 times faster. Well, 200 times faster than class 10. Uh, I don't see. Hmm. There is an I.O. expansion board. Okay, so that brings out the pins. There is a fan. <laughs> All right. So this one is interesting in terms of CPU. Uh, GPU-wise, not as much. Power consumption, I don't have numbers. Do you? Nobody does. <laughs> so, um, it's probably in the 5 range, but in the sub 5 range, but we don't know where. Now, a variety of things that I have no idea about. This one, I at least know what the headliner is. So, this is the Z board. It's another board that's kind of expensive, kind of like the Arndale. The, um, oh, I should command another person to appear. So, in the Perl group, we have somebody that actually does development on this. Um, you won't appear unless you call by name. <laughs> Three times. Well, Andreas also does development on this. I've seen it on his desk. Um, so, um, this board has an ARM chip, but it also has an FPGA. So you can do um, hardware prototyping on it. And that's why, um, that's why Andrea, Andreas has a bunch of these. They are using them to prototype the, um, the uh, parallel. What our friend from the um, from the Perl group uses it for is prototyping hardware for power supplies, if I remember correct. Either way, it's interesting because you have both an ARM and the hardware that you develop if you are proficient in FPGA development on the same board. I don't remember what the price range for these is, but it's really around the Arndale price. It should be around $300 plus or minus, there, there is some educational discount. And just like the Arndale, uh, all sort of uh, connectors are brought out. Just two prices for 319 and 395. Yeah, the, uh, the academic is 320, and I think wow. that's, well, yeah, 400 is roughly the, the other one. So I, would, I wouldn't um, go too much on this, but I think um, if you want to learn FPGA development, this is my new favorite board. There used to be a, a cheap board uh, that I was interested in before, but the fact that you have a, a, an ARM host there just makes it so much more interesting. Um, I will just move along from this one. I like the fact that it's got VGA on it. Not too many of these boards have VGA. Also, the SD card is full size, which is interesting probably doesn't matter anymore. So HDMI, VGA. Right, and uh, so there are a bunch of buttons here. Uh, let's see. 
five buttons arranged in a cross configuration kind of interface and a couple of user buttons. Programming and reset button. Let's see where else can I see. I don't know how much memory is there on this guy. I see two chips. So we go out the website and uh, uh, they got it hidden pretty well. Twelve volt power supply. Uh, now, because everything is really about the FPGA, it's not about the rest. But okay, five twelve DDR three, two fifty six uh, quad SPI flash, and then there is an SD an SD card that um, that they. The FPGA is a Zinc 7000, which may or may not mean something to you. Uh, the Ethernet is up to 1 gigabit. USB OTG 2.0 and USB UART. Multiple displays, as we were looking at before, HDMI and VGA. And it says ONI. There's a version of Ubuntu for it called Xilinx. And they, when you buy it, you get this little thing called Zinc Linux, which is, you know, their, their Linux. It's not very powerful. Mm. But you can go to the Zillibus site and download Xilinx. Z-I? Uh, X-I. X-I. X-I? Yeah, so I think the site is X-I-L-L-Y-B-U-S. Mm. But do you know if the FPGA programming tools are available on the next one? Or do you have to have those? It's uh, the Xilinx board? Yeah, the Zinc 7000. Yeah, the Xilinx board, they have a free... It's it's called like a web kit. You have to go through quite a few histrionics to download it from their site. Okay. But once, they, once they're absolutely sure that you're who you say you are, they can download it. I'm having some, uh, some experience like that with... Um, with uh, the Intel uh, Knight's Corner. Mm. So, um, our R&D team is done with, uh, with the Phi. So I, can, I could borrow their, their, uh, their Knight's Corner uh, pre-release board, which is basically the same with a little bit older, older firmware. But uh, but you need to get the tools because you're accessing a cluster. And it's some you're basically accessing a cluster on a board over PCI. So there there is no way to get there unless you have the tools, and you have to get them from the Intel developer side. And it's fun. The the Phi is an unrelated hardware here. It's an Intel card that um, is similar and completely different uh, to an NVIDIA accelerator. So an NVIDIA Kepler, I guess, would be the current best one. A Kepler K20 would have mm, probably 2,000 cores now. Something of that order, yeah. So uh, it would have 2,000 cores that are basically um, ALU units. They can do math in parallel using a synth program. The Phi is an accelerator, but it's completely opposite end of the range. It's 60 cores that are basically uh, in order, <coughs> they are in order 1 gigahertz uh, Pentium 3s. Maybe that's unfair. Let's say that they are in order Xeons, but they are in order. In order, like to script down Adam, basically. Okay. What it is. Uh, so, um, but you get 60 of them in a single board. And so, uh, you can program it basically like your cluster in a box. And they don't have to all get the same program as in a SIMD machine. This is a MIM device. They have all the memory exchange issues, but 
uh, it's interesting because theoretically the optimizations that you do on the Knight's Corner should also work on your standard Xeon. So you're doing things that would make sense on both platforms and you would get some little bit of improvement on it if you are running on Xeon with 8 cores and a lot more improvement if you're running on 60 on a Knight's Corner. So it's, it's less of a shock than going all the way to, uh, to OpenCL and just writing a, a data parallel program. So that, that will appeal to uh, lazy people uh, and to algorithms that are not good for that kind of parallelism. Uh, the, the Kepler and the Phi are about $2,000 each. So they are definitely not hobbyist hardware. But as I said, in the lab we have a pre-release one. So it, it's now sitting on my test bench at work, waiting for me to have, I don't know when, free time. Um, so there are a few things around Raspberry Pi. So we go back to cheap hardware. Let's, let me tell you about the one that I know, and then we'll Google for the ones that I don't know. These arrived yesterday, just in time for you guys. So. <clears throat> This one is a $39 Raspberry Pi that comes from Adafruit and it's the new Raspberry Pi. Do you see any difference? Color. There is absolutely no visible difference I can see, however the RAM chip is, is 512. Um, so the Raspberry Pi is a stacked design, which is why you cannot see the Broadcom thing if they are sitting under Samsung. Um, and now the, the memory is five, 512 megs. Um, so now that Adafruit is selling this at 39, we have seen the other hardware at 39 and 49. It's got some competition. Um, it has The test that would be interesting to do is trying to fit this in a case because what's always annoying about Raspberry Pis is that placement of connectors is not precise. So when you buy a case, it may or may not fit your board. And this is with the early production ones. Now they are producing them in the hundreds of thousands, so you would hope that that's been worked out. This is the first one. I have three at home, but they're all, uh, they're all first batch. So um, you could literally see the different plants at work. This one is from the mass production. Hopefully it's become more consistent, but my cases are also from way back then, so the, the question is interesting. Didn't, didn't the price used to be $35? This one, I believe it's, it's theoretically still 35 This came from Adafruit and it's 39 I don't know if Adafruit charges a bit more or if the price just has changed. Changed. I'm sorry, say again. It, it's supply and demand. Everybody wants one, so they start raising prices. Well, the price break was Ethernet, no Ethernet, right? Was, yeah, the Model yeah. A's did not have the USB Ethernet header connector on there. And so, so you know, 25 bucks. Yes. And they used to have half the RAM. Then briefly, it was said that they would have the same RAM, but they were never built under that spec. And now they actually started making them. They doubled the RAM in the Model B and the Model A as the old 256. The, the thing that's interesting is the Model A has a smaller power footprint. That's, unless you really, really need to save 10 bucks, I think that's the only thing that's interesting about the Model A. There were some pretty good numbers on the foundation site. I can't remember them now. But Obviously, again, same trick as in the Beagle Bone, if you don't have anything drawing from USB or plugged into USB, even if it doesn't mean to draw, um, the power consumption will go down. Same thing with Ethernet, but the A will consume less uh, regardless. So it has this little bit of an advantage. Okay, so um, we have seen, when we did the talk about Raspberry Pi, we've seen one of the early uh, extension expansion boards that was called uh, slice of pi that was basically a prototyping plate. So uh, there are a bunch of new ones now, and 
as I said, Google will be our friend because I haven't learned these ones yet. So, first one is called PyFace. As you can see, it's branded by Element 14 as well. Um, so, what does it have? The box says, two changeover relays, eight open collector outputs, eight digital inputs, eight LED indicators, four switches. Used to use, uh, easy to use with Python, scratch and see. All right, let's see what does it look like. <coughs> Lots of screw connectors, which are always a uh, plus with me. I'm not a fan of breadboard connectors and hardware. Two relays, pretty obviously. Let's see if we can find um, some interesting example. So it seems to be listed by Newark. Price-wise, it's $30 at Newark, so that's what we should be expecting. So it's a relay board, and I don't, need, I don't need to go too much into detail as to what that does. Um, where are the LEDs that were promised there on the box? Oh, there they are. Nice array of LEDs. Two relays. And then, um, okay, digital inputs. <coughs> automation for $30. Credit card size, stacks on top of the Raspberry Pi, using the expansion connector. It has the inevitable bumper <laughs> that you've probably seen on other expansions. Uh, there is always some kind of bumper to keep the, the expansion level with the board below because of the placement of the connector. Um, some designs have it over Ethernet. I think this one is somewhere else. But that works. like it's being used for education. Buffered to protect the Raspberry Pi, that's nice. We wouldn't want to destroy a $30 piece of hardware. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, this is one. It proudly says made in UK, which um, was something that the foundation was getting uh, pretty insistent about with uh, with the Raspberry Pi itself. So let's see if the new one also says that. Yes, made in the UK. Um, they found some capacity in a plant that I believe belonged to Sony in the UK a while ago. Evidently now they're making them there. Okay, so we have these two next. This one is the infamous GERT board. Now, Kurt, you talk about the GERT board. No, this is, uh, this is Brian's duty. Are they out now? Can you get them? <laughs> I mean, it's so. totally cool. I, you know, <laughs> it, it was like an uh, electronic uh, paradise. To, but is it available? Uh, yes, it is. How much is it? It's like 45 bucks or something? Uh, I'm looking. What's their term for, uh, they don't use the term cape, do they? They use shields or something? Um, I don't think the foundation has a standard. Some people have been calling them slice. Um, yeah, I don't think they're... Um, I've seen slice face uh, board. But but Kurt's like one of the original developers, right? So they're only and he's the guy I think who's done a lot of the software stuff. And so yeah, he worked worked with Evan at Broadcom. Yeah. So assembled from uh, element fourteen. All right, well, let's do the unboxing. This is literally, I haven't opened before. So, free and open ARM Cortex development tools. The infamous compliance sheet, which, as we know, cost a couple of months of delays of the Raspberry Pi shipping last year. Uh, welcome to the world of ARM. Well, we know all about that. So 
some standoffs, uh, some tables, and a whole lot of jumpers. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work because it totally dwarfs the pie. But obviously you go with the expansion connector and it's going to sit underneath here. And motor controller, capable of controlling the motor bidirectionally, they're delivering 18 volts and 2 amps maximum. Okay, I see it. It's here. Does this have a separate power supply? Uh, that's what I'm wondering. There is a fuse up here. It must, I mean. Yeah, you have to provide separate power for the motors. That's a different channel. It's isolated from the. So we won't be driven by USB. <laughs> well, there are uh, some. Uh, yes. There are some screw connectors up here, which is where I imagine the power comes in. And. It goes out. That's my guess. Raspberry Pi Gert for 21 October 2012, it says. Let's see. Um, motor controller, we saw that. Dual channel D to A converter, 8 bit. Dual channel A to D converter, 10 bit. Onboard Atmel Atmega 328 microcontroller for running off board programs which are written, compiled, and uploaded to the GERD board from the Raspberry Pi. So you have uh, an Arduino chip. Um, six open collector outputs, 12 LED indicators up there. Um, three monetary push switches. Uh, 10 strap cables, well, those were in the box, 18 jumpers, manual, etc., etc. Key applications, experimentation, home burglar alarm, <laughs> motor control, sensor detection and control, educational. Okay. And the big question was, how much is this thing? $49.99. There are 20 available now if you just run. <laughs> and it's $45.98. Wait. Oh, wait. Different prices at different vendors. Where Where are you? Uh, MCM Electronics. Okay. I see Newark is uh, listed at 4598. I was afraid that the same vendor was giving us different drives, <laughs> which I would not put beyond the realm of possibility. Amazon does that. I'm using a Mac, so I'm supposed to get the higher price. <laughs> Okay, so there are a collection of data sheets here. So that's for the GERT board. And this one I have no recollection. It's just in my pile of hardware, so we'll have to Google or what the hell is it? I attached it to some hardware order last December and I haven't looked at it since. With a name like Delta Sigma Pi, you can imagine what's coming up when I Google. <laughs> <laughs> so it says Delta Sigma ADC Pi versus version 1.0. Oh, conveniently, there is a URL, Abiltronic. Fraternity for men. <laughs> Abiltronics.com. Abiltronics.com. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a British place. Abiltronics.co.uk. Uh, expand your Pi. Raspberry Pi expansion boards. ABC. analog digital converter so it's a 20 well it's an 18 pound ADC converter for the Raspberry Pi uh, 8 channel 17 bit analog to digital converter now how do you spell it? Hmm? ABE uh, I'm sorry AB electronics dot co dot UK Is 
designed to work as a single ended AD converter using the internal 2.048 volt reference voltage with the V pins tied to ground. Well, it's an, it's an AD converter. But, uh, yeah, you want the ADC pi. So what might applications be for that? Some data logging. This has a higher resolution than the converters that uh, were seen before. So if the, if the sample uh, resolution matters, it, that makes sense. We'll talk 17-bit. Eight channel, 17-bit. That's what it says. NCP 3424 is the converter. Uh, there are a bunch of other boards uh, RS232 serial uh, and one wire serial for, um, for Raspberry Pi, 20 pounds. Uh, one wire serial by itself for 13 pounds. Let's see what else is applicable to the Raspberry Pi here. Uh, 32 channel port expander, RTC real time clock for 10 pounds, that would be interesting. Um, actually they have two different RTC clocks, but one has a buzzer on it apparently so you can trigger alarms and the serial interface. Yeah, there, there are daughter boards for, um, for Raspberry Pi all in the 10 to 20 pound range. Probably the shipping will cost more than the board, unfortunately. Um, so here are the eight ports, obviously, by gold ground. This is the expansion of the Raspberry Pi. There are some jumpers here. That's it for Raspberry Pi hardware. Now, this one was actually a jump starter. Jump starter, so it's not even easy to get. It's called the Free SOC Explorer. I'm going to show it to you just for completeness, but um, this hasn't gotten much attention lately. The original design was supposed to be rounded here, as I remember. Now it's square. Yeah, everybody complained that it would be possible to make shields for it. I actually have one of these, and many one as well. Um, they're really cool. It's it's basically a, a 32 megahertz. I think it's a Cortex M3. Okay. And then you have a CPLD bus, so you can move the pins around. And then you've got a bunch of really cool analog stuff, um, amplifiers, comparators. It's got a huge list of stuff on there, uh, most of which I haven't used. One of the things I really like is it has uh, quadrature rotor decoders, which is nice for anything with robotics. A lot. Oh, uh, it has both SAR and Delta Sigma ADCs. <laughs> and it actually has the 5 volt regulator and the 3.3 volt regulator are ultra low noise regulators. So it allows you to do some really cool analog stuff that you can't do with traditional microcontrollers. Um, they're kind of out there. They're not as big as Raspberry Pis or Arduinos, but I like a lot. I think it's fun. I thought it would be interesting in terms of uh, the playing with hardware scenario of the of the Z board. Exactly. Um, but as usual, I never had the time to do it. Yeah. Uh, but one thing that really st uh, stood out when I uh, looked at this Kickstarter was that uh, they have this environment where it's drag and drop, so you can, like you were saying, realign the, uh, reassign the pins, but it's it's in a graphical map, so you can actually, at a glance, see what you what you have where. It's not so much about the drag and drop, but about the fact that you can get an overview of what's going on. Um, what's that called again? Free SOC. Uh, your site is freesoc.net. The board is Free SOC Explorer. Is it free as in free beer? Yeah. Well, the chip on there is made by a company called Cypress, and that's their specialty. They make these microcontrollers with a bunch of digital and analog front end stuff on them. 
And so you can, and if you can't get a hold of one of those, they make other experiment reports that you can. I think that uh, Cypress also runs uh, regularly some kind of event with the Greater Boston Chapter of the ACM. Uh, at least, I think I get it in my mailbox once every six months. So, if you want to go play with their hardware, you can sign up with one of their tutorials and go see it in person with someone that's going to walk you through it. It's not, it's not the sport, but it's one of those that uh, you were mentioning. So this is where the board layouts and schematics are released under Creative Commons license. So I seem to remember the, the Open Hardware logo on this, but I cannot find it. Actually, I think this was done before they decided what the logo would be. Oh, that would explain. So I, I don't think the logo is on there, but it is Open Hardware. Okay. So maybe the logo was on the Kickstarter page because they got to update that at some point. Uh, or maybe I've seen it on a poster. I remember seeing it somewhere. Okay. So that's another one for the hardware collection. So how much is that for? I got it as a Kickstarter, and I can't remember how much it, I paid. I think the full size is 45 or 50 bucks, but you can buy a mini, which is like your Arduino micro format uh, for, I think, 30. Oh, actually, now they're available. Um, oh, they are? So the, that one is uh, $74.99. It used to be 99 and the free SOC Mini is now 49, it used to be 59. Nice. Okay. I'm running out of hardware, so I can't detain you any longer. Um, there is one more, which Tom probably knows more about than I do. This is the one that you sent the email to the, um, the Open Hardware group saying, Federico says he has one. <laughs> so here it is, now you talk. <laughs> what is it? Do you remember? <laughs> it's a PC Tweeno. SparkFun has it, I know that much. It's it's the same as a lot of the other ones. It's an all-winter A10 chip. They just have all the pins broken out, so you can clip on a little shield and use Arduino shields with it. That's the big thing. Um, but yeah, it, it's like the BeagleBone. It's like the Raspberry Pi. It's kind of that kind of. It's just another um, another place to put your all-winter images, I guess. But um, what's it called? I think this came out in January. Yeah, it's the PC Duino. He is correct. PC Duino. So um, there is an Ethernet connector in semi sunk position. Don't ask me why. It's partially through the board. Um, HDMI, USB. There are uh, Ubuntu and uh, and Android images for this. Exact specs uh, are one gigahertz Cortex A8. Uh, it's an A10 all winner. Uh, Mali 400 GPU. One gigabyte of DRAM. Uh, two gigs of flash on board. SD card slot. Down here, SD card slot, um, 32 gigabyte as usual. The um, the headers are the same size as Arduino, and uh, there is um, RJ45, and in some versions there is a Wi-Fi dongle with it, not with this version. <coughs> Interestingly, on the page now they have a shield sub area. Uh, but it looks like specifications more than an actual list of shields. Let's see what's in the news. Mm, FAQs and what to do with the NAND and how to make it. 
So can we put in a product request since you're so good at getting hardware? <laughs> I need you to call up your country mates over there at SECO, um, S-E-C-O.IT, because they're the ones that are behind the unit. S-E-C-O. Dot IT, yeah. Now, you go to the website and their, their uh, contact information is listed on Devonshire Street, Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> not really sure why they would have a dot .IT domain, but, and that's not even in the North End. But, but, but they're the ones behind you do. So we need we need a you do a you do sounds really interesting. Oh, I, I need one of those. To <laughs> be honest with you though, all that you do is is it's basically a free a quad core freescale with the new ARM the the chip that's in the Arduino do. You can replicate that by taking the O droid and connecting it to an Arduino do. You get the exact same thing. It's I mean mm -hmm. it's nice having them integrated together, but it makes the board bigger. It makes it harder to use and it significantly increases power consumption. So, I'm sorry, Kurt. Seco? Yeah. Oh, seco.com. Let's see, seco.it. It goes to the same place. Oh, it does? Is it the same thing? It's it has an Italian flag and an English flag, British flag. <laughs> so, um, they Boston address. The Boston address. Well, the address of Gavin the Boston sure. is, in, is, in, sure. is in Tuscany, 91 yeah. New York. I think you mean a different domain. No, no, every time I email these guys, they refer me to some guy in Boston. Mm -hmm. Their address is, is in Arezzo, it's close to Florida. They need their American rep. And they are supposed to be behind the UDO because on the page I don't see anything about the UDO. Right, no, it's very low profile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which brings us back to the question of why do we want a you do anyway? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. We can get one for free so that we can test it. But that wouldn't work for your cluster plans. I That's true. Know. We'd need a lot of them. Oh, just. You can use that free scale stick to mm -hmm. make a more compact cluster. That's true. So, uh, there was one more piece of hardware that I was hoping to be able to display here, but it's not available yet, which is the uh, Arduino Uni. It's supposed to come out next week, um, but it hasn't come out yet. So, um, that is an Arduino platform, and on, uh, on its other side it has a non-Linux platform, all on the same board. Let me uh, read you what the... What's the point of that? Because you can. So Yun in Chinese means cloud, which is why it's called this way. Um, I know it makes no sense, but that's that's the reason. Um, so there is a blog on Arduino CC where this is announced. This was announced at Maker Fair in uh, San Fran. Oh, is that the one with the integrated Wi-Fi? I think so. Yeah, it has an integrated Wi-Fi yeah, LAN chip on it. So on the Arduino side, it's an Atmega 324. On the uh, Linux side, or the Linino side, as they call it, it's an AR9331 with Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and USB host. Uh, interfacing Arduino with complex web services has been quite a challenge. No kidding. Due to the limited memory available, and they tend to use verbose text-based formats like XML, da da da. Yeah. Like, I can tell you personally that plugging, uh, uh, I wanted to modify the firmware of Lady Ada's um, Internet of Things printer that prints tweets. The, the entire stack has to, um, to uh, cover TCP and then the, um, HTTP and then Twitter is authentication protocol, which is the worst thing of all. Um, so uh, the stack uses pretty much all the memory that you have, <coughs> and then, actually no, she copped out of the authentication. <laughs> so her stack doesn't cover the authentication, so you can print tweets that come out of queries, like search for anything that has this in the tweet. What I wanted was, uh, I have two of these, I wanted to attach one to a specific account, and leave it at home so that I can tweet to this account to remind me things like buy milk and then it pops out in the, in the kitchen. Um, but to do that, that 
that account is private, and so the, the printer has to do the authentication. And um, there are some attempts to do the Twitter authentication in Arduino, but most people just run away and uh, just use a proxy in the middle. So they, they set up a proxy somewhere out there that has your credentials, <laughs> and that exposes the stuff in, in the clear and some dumb protocol. That's way too easy. Uh, there is some Finnish guy that has implemented the proper authentication, but it, it barely fits in the memory of the microcontroller, and it doesn't work. So I was trying to patch that to make it work, and then I ran out of holidays. Um, or ran out of desire for pain, I guess. Uh, limited memory available, and tend to use verbose text-based formats. On Arduino Yun, we have created the bridge library, which delegates all network connections and processing of HTTP transactions to the Linux machine. Arduino Yun is the combination of a classic Arduino Leonardo. I don't know how that can be classic, given how recent that is. Mm -hmm. Based on the Atmega 32U4 processor, with a Wi-Fi system on a chip running Linino, a MIPS GNU Linux based on OpenWRT. There we go. <laughs> So we're bringing back, back MIPS for this. Um, it's based on the Atmega 32U4 microcontroller and on the Atheros AR9331, a system on a chip running Linux. You know, customized version of OpenWRT. You know, this is a hacking dream. <laughs> <laughs> the most used Linux distribution for embedded devices. Uh, okay. <coughs> Like Leonardo, it has 14 digital input-output pins, of which 7 can be used as PWM and 12 as analog outputs, 16 megahertz crystal oscillator, and a micro USB connector. It's Wi-Fi enabled, standard A-type USB connector. Uh, there are pictures on the site. Uh, you can see an SD card, USB connectors, Ethernet. Uh, there is a metal casing around the, the Wi-Fi. So is there an antenna connector somewhere? Uh, yes. So this will be available at the end of June and the target price is $69 before tax. This seems interesting to me. But it's not available yet. So I, I sent an, a tweet uh, during the week at, uh, to Adafruit asking what, what was up with these, and they said, we'll have them as soon as they are available on the first day, but no sooner. Okay. So not enough, uh, not soon enough for the stock. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, thank you.